show you up, they do this, what I call perjury trap. It's really, you know, they ask you a question, they have material they won't show you, you've forgotten about it. They say, you just lied, because this email you forgot about in 2016 yeah. proves your current memory is wrong. I mean, it's a memory test. It's it, disgusting. It, and then they accuse you of lying. It's completely rigged, and it's politically driven by Clinton yeah. operatives who have an agenda. Now, of course, he says he's asked his attorney to draft a criminal complaint of his own to bring against Mueller for misconduct. How do we assess all of this? Elizabeth Price Foley is a constitutional law professor at Florida International University College of Law, and she joins us tonight. Elizabeth, thank you very much for coming on. If we take three steps back, I'm, I'm a little bit surprised that this late in the process, we're still talking about Michael Cohen pleading to lying about the date of a perfectly legal real estate transaction that didn't even come to fruition, and dr Jerome Corsi at 72. This doesn't seem significant. It seems penny, pen, penny ante, and it doesn't seem related to Russian collusion. What is this telling us? Well, it's telling us how desperate Mueller and his team has become. Uh, you know, after almost two years of investigating, spending millions of taxpayer dollars uh, with a team of about 15 really aggressive, experienced lawyers. Uh, there's no there there in terms of substantive evidence of Trump-Russia collusion. So uh, after going hard at uh, high-level uh, Trump confidants and uh, campaign officials, uh, Mike Flynn, George Papadopoulos, uh, right. Carter Page, uh, uh, Paul Manafort, Rick Gates, and now, Michael Cohen, uh, the best they can manage to do is get a single counts of perjury out of some of them. Uh, so it shows you that these process crimes are all they've got. They don't actually have any evidence of Trump-Russia collusion, which was their mandate. But they're playing up the term Russia. And, and by the way, maybe they have videotape of Trump and Putin in the sauna, you know, dividing up the world or something. I mean, I, you know, who knows? But as of right. right now, it seems like there's a lot of Russia! You know, they're planning a real estate deal in Russia. And then once you calm down a little bit, you think, well, is that a crime, actually? Like, why are they telling me this? What does it mean? Yeah, no, it's absolutely not a crime. You're right. I mean, uh, what Michael Cohen supposedly lied about was the timing of uh, Trump Organization's pursuit of this real estate deal in Moscow. He said it ended in January 2016, and now he says it ended in June 2016. But it, it doesn't matter whether it's January or June of 2016. It was perfectly legal to do so. In fact, it's perfectly legal to do so right now if the Trump organization wait, wants wait, wait, to do wait, so. Wait, 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 wait a second. You're saying he was off by five months. I mean, that seems like a five-year sentence to me. Do you think that's a, that would be a fair sentence? <laughs> I don't know. I mean, ask George Papadopoulos. I think he's serving now 14 days in prison right at this moment for being off by about a month on the timing of his conversation with that Maltese professor, Joseph Mifsud. Um, but it doesn't matter because his uh, Papadopoulos's meeting with Mifsud was perfectly legal to do. Uh, 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 co uh, Trump Organization's pursuit of a real estate deal in Moscow was perfectly legal to do, even today, if they wanted to. Uh, so what they got at the end of the day is just sort of misrepresenting the timing of certain things. Not that they didn't tell the Mueller team about uh, those conversations or those deals. They told them about the substance of them. It's simply the timing of them. Um, but look, it tells you that uh, what's happening here is the Mueller team is uh, sort of hoping that Americans have what I call spaghetti brain, which is that they're unable to, to disassociate two different lines of thought. One is that the Russians um, interfered in a very sort of um, bumbling way with the 2016 election, buying those Facebook ads and, and not being very effective. Uh, we admit that they, they did some of that. Um, that's been documented. But that's one thing. That's one apple. And then the orange is whether or not the Trump campaign and colluded with Russia to throw right. the American presidential election. On that issue, there's been absolutely no evidence, despite two years of very hard investigation. But what the, what the Mueller team and the Democrats on the left are hoping to do is that the Americans will have that spaghetti brain phenomenon, where they'll confuse the two and they'll conflate them. So that if you just say, Russia, 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 oh, right. look, they lied about something having to do with Russia, uh, there must be collusion. They right. say. I mean, they hacked our election. We're at war. Russia! 
Right. Uh, it's very McCarthyistic uh, too. I mean, get, get, uh, there's a certain irony right here, right? That the new Democrats, when they take over the House in January, are yeah. going to be having hearings about all of this, and they're going to start sounding a whole heck of a lot like Joseph McCarthy did. So oh, Adam Schiff and uh, Jerry Nadler are the new Joseph McCarthys. I do this with my dogs with squirrels, so I know uh, what it is. <laughs> Professor, Squirrel. thank you very much. Great to see you tonight. Thanks. Stacey Adams ran for office.